sorry, just give me one second. I, oh, sorry, cat. My, the dogs are playing and I need them to stop. I'm eating garlic toasty. It's very nice. Steph is dealing with her dogs and I'm eating a Subway cheese and garlic toasty. Two bucks, pretty good. Jeez, Adrian, what episode are we up to? Five. Five. <laughs> Welcome to episode five. I'm clearly on top of it. Uh, this week, Adrian and I watched <laughs> The Zookeeper's Wife. Um, it's a 2017 film, uh, and this one was my pick. I saw this film and I really wanted Adrian to watch it and to discuss it. So um, stick with us for a little bit and we'll get into <laughs> and we'll get into the breakdown. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I really, I really did like this film. Um, and there's, there's quite a lot, I guess, because it's it's set in in World War Two, which is interesting to me because I'm a big history buff. But uh, you yeah, know, this I'm glad you kind of put this on my radar because I, I wouldn't have watched it otherwise. But um, yeah, I didn't know about it until I was trolling Stan, and it came up, and it just kind of, I was like, yeah, all right, I'll just watch it now. I have the time. And I'm really glad that I did. Um, all right, so I'll, I'll get us started with our weekly brief. Uh, mm-hmm. So we've got actually a fair amount of uh, movie announcement news, mm-hmm. um, some of which are actually exciting, some of which are just I wanted to mention because maybe I thought it might interest you. Um, oh, yes, okay. So the first one, uh, so I don't know if you're a Sylvester Stallone fan, but uh, so his production company, Balboa Productions, uh, have paired up with MGM and they're currently developing a superhero drama called Samaritan. Uh, oh. It's about a boy who discovers a superhero who vanished 20 years prior after like a big climactic battle and yep. it turns, turns out this hero is alive and then the kid, I guess, kind of bonds with him and, and they kind of go from there. Um, so there's oh. not much to know, know about this, but yeah, so the line's like heavily producing it and, and he's got a big hand in this. So I'm interested to cool. see. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, I, I kind of, I'm getting like a hero's vibe from it. I don't know, don't know if you watched that. That yeah, show back yeah, in yeah, the yeah. early 2000s. Yeah, so um, hopefully it's better than that show. But uh, no, this is kind of cool. Um, the the second, bit of, second bit of news is what I thought might interest you. I don't know. Um, but So the newlywed yes. royals are getting a movie uh, because, you know, of course they are. So the US television network Lifetime yeah. has announced a TV movie based around the re- relationship and eventual marriage of Harry uh, and, and Meghan Markle. And wow, Meghan really Markle. cool. Yeah. Um, they, they did one with... Um, the bald guy and the other chick. What? That was a couple years ago. Kate <laughs> Phillip, Middleton and I don't know. Will. Oh, Will. Okay, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah okay, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't seen that one. Carly has and she liked it, I think. I think it went in cinemas. Yeah, it did, didn't it? No, wait, I don't know. Um, so our next bit of news is something I don't know. Again, so this is more, I guess, for a lot of, well, sci-fi fans in general, I suppose. So um, uh, we're about to enter the Twilight Zone again. Uh, CBS All Access, um, they released the full trailer to the Twilight Zone reboot. Um, okay. Hosted by Jordan Peele, who won an Oscar for I think best oh, original yeah, yeah, yeah. screenplay for Get Out. Um, Keenan Peele. Hmm. Keenan Peele. Yeah. The interesting thing about Twilight Zone is this show has been around since 1959. Originally, uh, had a couple of reboots and stuff, and it was notorious for back in the 80s where um, the I think a couple of cast members were killed during a stunt um, Ooh, in wow. one of the reboot movies. Yeah, and it's like that kind of shunned. Um, any semblance of this franchise coming back for a long time. But then I guess wow. CBS is keen on it. So, yeah, I mean, it looks really cool. And it, I'm really keen for, like, a really good science fiction thriller. Uh, this is – or supernatural thriller, I guess, is what you would call it. Um, so, no, and it looks yeah. – they've got, they've got a really good cast that they've shown. Um, so, yeah, it's a high-profile actors and um, it's – they've taken a more surreal – cerebral approach to it. So, I'm excited. Jordan Peele is actually married to – this is useless information, but Jordan Peele is married to – um, Chelsea Peretti, who plays uh, Gina no, Oh, yeah. that's right. I forgot that you just like her. But yeah, yeah. fun fact. <laughs> fun fact. I just have a kid now, right? I think so. Yeah, that, that, yeah, yeah okay. Girl. That's cute. What's her name? You probably know. No, I is don't like, actually. Is it, oh, I was going to say, is it Apple or something? Isn't that no, Gwyneth no, Paltrow's kid? A, I'm pretty, yeah, 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 it is. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a normal people name. Oh, okay. It's, can I go on a quick change and say, why do celebrities name their kids really weird stuff? Well, see, here's the thing is that I don't know that they do. I feel like it's just because they're celebrities, the 
the more outlandish the name, the more right. we uh, like, you like take recognize note of it. it. Yeah, okay. Because like Whereas, I have a fr- like there, dude. I I did school photography for nearly two years, and oh, the names right. that people have are just <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> well, like, I I I know someone whose kid is called Amity. Amity. Like, that's mm-hmm. the name for the girl. And I'm like, that's not a name. <laughs> Don't call yeah. your kid that. Um, anyway. There's, <laughs> there is a woman who named her child Absidy. Oh, I think, I, right. But okay. it's A, B, C, D. E, a, B, C, D, yeah, yeah. I, I think I remember this. There was a news story about how her daughter was picked on during a flight in America. Yep. Yeah, yep. I, I remember this. Okay, yeah, A, B, C, D. <laughs> yes, D. <laughs> Like, yeah, it's, it's, so not, ridiculous. it's not that, and I think I actually really, um, like phonetically it them. sounds good, maybe. But. Yeah. Not, not spelt though. No. Um, <laughs> but the, the, the reason that they named their daughter Apple is because it's their first child. To, it was their first child and she was the apple of their, their eye. And so I like uh, kind of appreciate that, but at the same time, like, mm, no, I think she's just crazy. Anyway. <laughs> Apple. Yeah, oh, God. yeah. Good God. Um, so, and uh, one of the other movies that I thought was quite interesting uh, is a Netflix one, a, a big ticket for them. Uh, so, Woody Harrelson and Kevin Costner are in mm-hmm. to hunt down Bonnie and Clyde. Uh, oh, I love yeah, that. Yeah, so Netflix had released a trailer for The Highwayman, uh, which is basically on the opposite spectrum of that notorious story. So, this is about the two Texas Rangers who lead the manhunt across America to find Bonnie and Clyde. Um, and I thought it was really cool. Like, I've never actually seen the movie, I think from like the 50s or 60s, about Bonnie and Clyde. Um, but the story's always, always fascinated me. And I'm a big fan of Woody Harrison, especially Kevin Costner. Like, his run in the 90s of his movies, uh, like Field of Dreams, is probably my favorite Costner movie. Oh, and I guess mm. Dancers, Dancing with Wolves. Um, yeah. but this actually looks really decent. Um, so yeah, I, I really, I am really enjoying what Netflix is doing with the high profile, um, movies. So this is a good yeah. one to look out for. Another cool, uh, I guess, in the vein of uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, so uh, Taron Egerton belts out some classic Elton John songs in the trailer for Rocket Man, which yeah, is a, yeah, bi- yeah, yeah. a biopic of the music- uh, musician's early life and career. Uh, so him. has a pretty good cast, you know, Bryce Dallas Howard, Jamie Bell, Richard oh, Madden. I love Bryce Dallas Howard. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, and it, what's really cool is that the trailer <laughs> obviously. Um, has like songs playing in the background, but it's all Taron Egerton singing, uh, oh, which is really, it. it's, it's really nice. And he's, he actually has, he's really good. <laughs> um, cause recently I think there's a video of him. I think it was at the Oscars, him and Elton John were singing, um, one of their songs. I think it was a mm-hmm. uh, tiny dancer. Uh, I love tiny dancer. So, yeah. Right. It's a good song. So that's, that's, that's actually really cool. Um, so the last bit of news we have is kind of disappointing. Um, I haven't got around to watching it, but anyway, so, uh, Sci-Fi, do you know the channel Sci-Fi? Um, yeah. So they they decided to drop the axe on their adaption of George R. R. Martin's Night Flies uh, after only a single oh, okay. season. So Night Flies was about like a ratty crew who set out to find, set out into space to find alien life. Uh, and yeah, I was going to say that's on Netflix at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And so it only it only because it only just like got put on Netflix like I think a couple of weeks ago, uh, yeah. and apparently it's already been cancelled. Um, and so apparently to rapid, uh, rapid uh, dwindling viewership, um, the network was convinced that the show just wasn't worth the cost because apparently, and this is what really confused me, uh, mm-hmm. what got me, it was that Night Flies was the most expensive series sci-fi had ever produced. Oh, jeez. Um, and so the fact that like it was dropping millions or hundreds of thousands of people each, uh, each viewing... Um, yeah. They're just like, it's not worth the cost. And so they decided to get rid of it straight away. <laughs> yeah, that's, um, that's very sensible. Yeah. If it's going to cost you more money to <laughs> yeah. make, well, it's, like, it's just not it's not worth it. Because from because I haven't watched anything from the sci-fi channel for a long time, and I always thought like this shows they oh, put it out like, a, a, a kind of like they're not like the, well what I remember when I was when I had Foxtel was that a rich sci-fi originals weren't that high production value. It was kind of like you know like the librarians TV show and stuff like that, and oh, it that wasn't was exactly rubbish. yeah yeah and. And because sci-fi, uh, so Night Flies looked like a really awesome, almost like, um, what is it? Uh, the Expanse, which is another really popular um, science fiction adaption. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, no, I'm so still, I uh, think they've just had, um, mm. I could be wrong. I'm just going to Google and double check this. But no, they, go for it. So I, I like love sci-fi. Sci-fi is the channel that I 
live for. And yeah, yeah. they, I was a big fan when they did um, Warehouse 13. Oh, I, I, I love, yeah, okay. Sure. Just recently, yeah, yeah, it is. Just recently they had 12 Monkeys. Oh, um, the, um, the wait, TV so show that was adapted a, from the movie. From the movie um, with Bruce Willis and Brad Pitt. Yeah, oh, cool. yeah. It was four seasons long and it was the Whoa. production value. <laughs> four and years. The, it was in, it's insanely good. And I if didn't even anybody know ever thing. wants to watch 12 Monkeys, I highly recommend it because it's right. just so intricately thought through. And is you that come a, to the last episode and it's, it's, uh, is it that just a, all makes sense and it's amazing. Because I've seen the movie. Is that a continuation of the movie universe or is that like a retelling? I'm not sure. I've never of... seen the movie. Oh, okay. All right. I think mm. it doesn't seem to have any anything at the beginning that implies that it already existed, that the universe okay, already existed sure. beforehand. So, um, I, And I don't know if it's a retelling. I think it's maybe a, a take on. Cool. Yeah, I'll definitely check that out. That's the end of the, the movie announcement news and I want to talk about, but I did want to briefly mention the Oscars that happened. Uh, was it yesterday or the day before the Oscars? Uh, I think it was on uh, Monday. Yeah, Monday. Actually, I'm not sure. I've not been I'm not been up with the Oscars this year. Okay, well, yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure it was Monday because we were supposed to record last night. And we went to yes. and Yeah, so I think it was Monday or Tuesday and um, there was some surprising... Uh, wins and losses for the night. Yeah. Um, so detail, detail. yeah. So Green Book won Best Picture, which was a movie I mentioned in my What's in yes. the Box Office last week, um, which uh-huh. was really cool. Uh, I'm a little bit disappointed Vigo didn't get the win for Best Actor. That went to Rami Malek. He won for Bohemian Rhapsody. Um, mm-hmm. And actually, I think Bohemian Rhapsody also won um, for Best Soundtrack. Um, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, and. Uh, but a Star is Born actually did win. Star is Born, they won Best Original Song um, by Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga, who actually performed it. Yeah, they performed it oh, at, right. the, yes. at the event. I was going to say, there was a big... Yeah, about the bad day. on Twitter, <laughs> they posted a picture being like, yeah. the Oscars this year, trying to tell me that these guys are not having an affair. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, because speaking of that, that actually kind of blew out because apparently, yeah, obviously everyone who knows about the, uh, there's the, the song that they perform is quite intimate and there's some like it looks like there's hints about like they got quite close during or like their relationship yeah. is very uh somewhat romantic but uh bradley cooper has actually come out on a post interview after the oscars saying that he actually spoke to his wife because he's marrying his kid and he spoke okay. to her about like that's kind of how the song has to play out and so like that was it's fully intended but that's not there's no subtext yeah, yeah, yeah. to it yeah um, and i i appreciate that that's like good showmanship so yeah yeah that's kind of like um in, when you're a theatre kid like me, uh, when you have a best friend, there's always this kind of joke that's like, you're not really best friends if there's not a a romantic rumour about you. Oh. So, <laughs> okay. So I always kind of, when I see stuff like that, because yeah. my brother is obsessed with Lady Gaga. He thinks she's fantastic. Oh, and right. she is. Um, but he, Bradley Cooper went to a couple of the Las Vegas shows that, Lady Gaga was performing at oh, okay. and she is so involved in being in character when she performs that song that she was like in tears yeah right <laughs> singing that song with him like very over the top and quite dramatic so it does it makes sense to me that people would be like mm, are they not having an affair You're like no they're just really good at their jobs well she, she's actually <laughs> a surprisingly good actor um yeah so I mean props to her uh one of the coolest wins, uh, it's like a steal, I suppose, because it, she wasn't a pick for it, but um, uh, Olivia uh, Coleman, I think uh, is her name, she won for um, uh, Best best uh, Actress um, for The which Favourite, which, which is a movie about oh, um, yes, yes, yep, 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 yep. Queen Victoria or something, whatever it is, uh, and... She she's actually yeah. amazing in that. <laughs> she's she's great, and she's um, she's been around for a while. Like I've seen her in a lot of things. Like she's a really good uh, British comedian. Um, oh yeah. So she uh, most known for like her role in like Peep Show, which is a really old, early two thousands show, and I love her part as Doris in Hot Fuzz. Um, so oh, uh, nice. She kind of was like the underdog for for that night because uh, everyone thought that. Um, uh, oh, what's the name? Quella Deville, the actress for her. She was everyone was different. Yeah, Glenn Close. Everyone tagged her to be the winner for Best Actress, but that went, mm. yeah, obviously to... Um, and the Best Supporting Actress went to... Uh, Re, uh, what's her name? Um, Regina King. Who I'm, not, I'm not too familiar with who she is, 
but uh, apparently oh, yes. It, yes, everyone yes, was yes, surprised yes, yes. that she won. So I'm not sure what she, she won for. <laughs> I I remember her distinctly in my brain. She will forever be in Miss Congeniality 2. She uh, was the cop partner. Okay, right. Uh, and, and another really good surprising win was um, Spike Lee's film Black Klansman won for Best Adapted Screenplay, which was exciting because he... Uh, he's been nominated quite a few times for, um, well, I don't know, I don't think he has been nominated, but I think everyone's wanted him to win an Oscar because he's put out some pretty unique films in the past and like okay. he didn't win for best picture, or best director, but the fact that he got for best screenplay, was pretty good. Um, actually Afonso, yeah, nice. I think, um, Afonso Cuaron for Roma won best, uh, director. Um, okay. I haven't seen that. I think it's about yeah, I mean, I something about like a story in Mexico. It's a foreign film. Um, that also won, uh, I think that won, because there's a new a category I didn't know was there, a category for like foreign film in the Oscars, yeah. and uh, Roma won for that. So, um, th- there's yeah, there's a lot of cool wins. Um, I, I'm still like, yeah, I, I think I think for me, Viggo Mortensen's a new, you know, Oscar for Leo type thing, where like I really think that yeah, guy, yeah. he definitely deserves a win. Um, and he's been nominated for like the past couple of years in a row, so... Hopefully he gets one soon. But uh, yeah, yeah, I just want to me- just want to mention the Oscars because you know we've actually mentioned the Oscars quite a few times for my podcast about you know when they fired Kevin Hart and then when they cut out you know the certain categories from the show and um, uh, actually I think th- I think it's really cool because the Oscars the fact that they didn't have a host it actually worked out pretty well like they um, all the winners were afforded more time for the speeches um, yeah. and it's almost like you, it went unnoticed that they didn't have a host because, you know, like you said, I think last week that all the announcers, they had their own little bits they do and, yeah. and uh, it doesn't matter. Like I think from now on that will go without hosts. You don't need it. So yeah. I definitely think this new because format. Because they have such, they mm. have such hardcore rehearsal periods anyway. Exactly. For, yeah. Yeah. For so. it. And if something were to go wrong short, they would have like backups for their backups. Like if. For instance, yep. someone was high as a kite and you know, <laughs> like the needed... James Franco in a ha- um in a houseway yeah. back in the... yeah that was a bad <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> well, that about wraps up our weekly brief for this week, Steph. So I think it's a perfect time for us to slide into our discussion of the zookeeper's wife. Um, so here it is. Maybe that's why I love animals so much. You look in their eyes. And you know exactly what's in their hearts. What have you been up to in your little zoo? What I was really surprised at was that it had a really big setup for um, a very dark film. Um, And it wasn't as dark as I'd expected it to be. So the budget was like twenty million dollars, and wow, okay, that, that's a that's a lot lower than I thought it would have been. Wow. Well, yeah, surprise, surprisingly low considering how many animals were on set. Yeah, I was going to say like the first scene, I've been seen where um, Jessica Chastain's like riding her bike through the zoo, and I'm like, oh look, that, those are all real animals. Like, there's a some very yeah. expensive animals that they got. Um, so yeah, so they yeah. actually said that it was very little to no CGI in in most of those shots. So they're all real animals on, on well, the, set. Well, there's, there's pretty much, with the exception, there's pretty much no CGI that I could tell, like, uh, in the film, like, other than for, like, backdrops and stuff like that, that's sparsely. But, yeah, like, there's very little CGI in this at all. Um, yeah, which I actually really like because sometimes if you don't have a very good CGI person, it's very obvious when the CGI yeah. is used, which yeah. makes it really difficult to, like, yeah. remain in the story. Because because um, when when I was queued on to that was when uh like just to jump ahead a little bit is when like when the Germans actually it's, do attack uh mm-hmm. Poland is that you hear the planes but you never see them and then yeah. and th- there was one instance where you see shadows through through like the the glass ceiling in the train yeah. station but the fact that they didn't show the planes told me oh they didn't have the budget for it but it actually did kind of work in their favor because you don't technically need to see the planes to get. The fact that they're, yeah. you know, I actually, you know, I really appreciate filming that's like that, where you get yeah. to see, you get to feel the whole story, but a lot of it is actually done in a suggestive way. I think that's really yeah. clever. If you can tell a story without having to show everything, that's really clever. Yeah, well, exactly. Like that, that's that's kind of how I treat uh, when I write stories, and so I, whenever I see that, obviously I like give props to it because like that's yeah, don't treat your audience stupid. 
Yeah, so they actually only made worldwide, they only made a total of 26.1 million, which is kind of upsetting. But oh, wait, wait, actually... so total gross was only 20, yeah. so it's technically a financial failure. Yeah. Then. Oh, rough. Yeah, <laughs> even though, even though it um, is actually, it was the top grossing specialty film of 2017. All right. Um, but then on Rotten Tomatoes, it's only 61, which is mm. like... Yeah, there's Six. just like two very different opinions on, Six, yeah, on yeah. it. Yeah, 61 means like it's okay. Like for me, um, it was enjoyable. Like I did feel like it, like it was a long two hours, which is a weird thing to say because it, it's quite a long film. But um, it, it definitely was interesting. Like I like I said before, I'm a big fan of World War II like films mm-hmm. set in that period. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, well, when it, when it kind of got into the actual crux of it, it's basically Schindler's List in the zoo is what this film is. We should probably say that. Um, yeah, and, yeah. And so I did like that whole, like every, all, all the moments of when they were hiding and helping the Jews escape and stuff was really interesting. And I thought it was more yeah. or less done really well. Um, and I, I, always, wanted, I always think that those stories do slightly yeah. better, the ones where it's the people yeah. who could have gotten in trouble helping the Jews anyway. They're always my favorite World War II ones to know. Yeah, to be like, yeah. Oh, okay, the, yeah, yeah, there are some really shitty people and the fact that World War II happened is horrendous. Yep. But the fact that there were people who did did like continue to do the right thing mm. um even when it was incredibly dangerous is well yeah i mean like yeah, the it fact, always makes me feel good the fact that like, in this movie like the germans pretty much occupy the, their zoo for like the entire war so they're smuggling yeah. jews in and out of the zoo with like dozens of of nazi soldiers constantly patrolling and like the fact that yeah, they like, never got caught <laughs> was amazing if there, if there was one place to like definitely not try and smuggle jews it's that place I think at the end it said like they they smuggled like three hundred like besides like two people who died, over three hundred people that they smuggled through that zoo that they helped was amazing. Yeah, and um, only two of them, only two so, of them died. Um, yeah. from being found out, which was yeah, that, that's crazy. I I wanted to mention actually at the beginning because when this film opened, like I think for more or less like I think half of this film is shot very very well. Um, the beginning scene I absolutely love. Um, I. Sp- Cause oh, it, it's beautiful. Because it, it opens up on, like, I think inside the house, you've got, like, I think the kid's sleeping with, like, a couple of, like, lion cubs. And yep. those yep. lion cubs are adorable and they're lovely. But the shot, that I think it's my favourite shot in the whole film, is when Jessica Chastain fir- first walks out into the banister overlooking the zoo. And it kind of, mm-hmm. it's shot behind her and it kind of, the camera kind of pans over her shoulder as she's looking and then it settles on her back. And then the title card comes up and yeah. it's so elegant. I was like, oh, mm-hmm. this is great. Like, from the get-go, I was like, I was very impressed. It, it won me over yeah. pretty quickly at the beginning. Yeah, it's very picturesque, which I really love. And what's interesting is that this is filmed by um, a woman, so Nikki Cool, shit. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nikki shit. <laughs> yeah, right. Nikki, Nikki Caro. <laughs> right, um, okay. And, I've, uh, yeah, I think I think that gives it a an element of, softness that when it's directed by a man a film doesn't really get yeah i mean yeah i don't know i just find stuff a lot of stuff that is directed by a female has a very unique feminine quality to it which i really Mm. i really enjoy because sometimes when it's directed by a man they're much um harsher harsher stories harsher filming like very yeah no um, i can understand yeah i think you're right because yeah. I'd say for the most part, this film is shot like it. Look, I think you're right. It's smooth. Like it's a weird way to put an adjective on it, but it is smooth. Um, like the way things are shot. Except I think the editing is a pitfall for this movie. I'll mention that later. But it has some atrocious editing that I noticed. In yeah. It. Um, really? Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I can mention it now. But uh, basically, the, so there's a part where um, what's what's the 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 actual zookeeper's name, the guy. What's his name again? I can't remember. Jan. Yeah. Okay. So there's a part where Jan's helping. It's sad, but he's helping basically the Jews when they're being evacuated from the um, the the slums uh, or the ghettos. Uh, he's helping the kids being put into the train, which we all know where they're going, which is uh, the uh, death camps. Um, and there's a shot where he's helped them on the train, and then the sliding cattle door crosses over him, and then. It's a jump cut to his face again, and then the sliding door crosses over him again. 
Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, and yeah. I, I was like, oh. And then there's times where they jump cut where the the most noticeable one was when um, when the animals first get uh, uh, just after the bombing when, when the Nazis take over the zoo and there's an elephant that's about to charge and the Nazis shoot him. Uh-huh. Um, and so the thing, thing with jump cuts, jump cuts is you're not supposed, if you do that, you have to kind of, there's a separational degree where you need to have like, uh, you need to drastically change your angle and position if you jump cut, like the same scene. Uh-huh. But what they did was that they had a front on the elephant and then they maybe jump cut like two degrees right of it. And so it was very mm-hmm. jarring. Like it looked like it was a mistake and they did that a couple of times. Yeah. So yeah, yeah that, that, that happens throughout the film and um, it, it definitely isn't, like if it's purposeful, it's not very, it's not a smart decision and it completely yeah. took, it took me out of, out of this film's narrative every time that happened. I was like, oh right, I'm watching someone's, film they edited i'm not watching the story so yeah yeah uh, that, that bothered me quite I a bit found, i found the the um the massacre of the animals really hard right i found that really difficult to watch because i i suppose i have an affinity for animals and the fact that they were just so heartlessly yeah yeah, yeah. worn down and killed and it just uh it was very hard to get through <laughs> Yeah, well, especially yeah, when because um, like, I think Jessica Chastain's character, like her and her and her um, zookeeper friend, who's Ruth Bolton from Game of Thrones, they're running around trying to stop the Nazis, and they're just like shooting the running camels, and the birds are flying away, and yeah, and they're, they're tearing down everything, and like they, they also enjoy it, which is what like, the, the yeah. cynical nature of I guess yeah. portraying Nazis is that yeah, they, they enjoy yeah. it, and and um, these animals are the life uh, of the of the yeah. zookeepers, and it's hard. And- What's really interesting is the the fact that we we do really love the animals and yeah. we're made to feel yeah. um, responsible for them because Jessica Chastain's character, while she's not actually a zoologist, um, she knows essentially everything that her husband does. Yeah. And there's a scene where they're at a dinner party and we're introduced to Lutz oh, and he's very, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, very yeah. like, um, so Lutz is the, um, the German soldier who ends up, you think he's like really decent at the beginning of the episode, at, at the beginning of the movie, but then yeah, he's right. like, gets increasingly seedier and seedier, but we're introduced to him and it's at a dinner party that the, um, Zambinskis are hosting. They're hosting, yeah, yeah. And the um, elephants. So we've already seen her um, bicycle through the zoo and help take care of the the animals and maintain everything. But there's a moment where the elephant gives birth, and so she goes out and she ends up interacting with the elephant, um, the, the elephant uh, cub, I guess. I don't know what a baby elephant is called, um, and. It like stops she's breathing, right? She's not breathing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so her nose, her trunk is blocked, so she can't breathe. Oh, yeah, her airways so are closed. This really, yep. Yeah, so there's this really beautiful moment of the mother elephant being like, you know, like, my baby, my baby, and she's crying. Like, she's, you can hear her crying. And then um, Antonina gets up, and she's like, let me help you, let me help you. Um, and I thought her accent was really good, by the way. Um, but she ends up, like, saving the baby elephant while the mother elephant and the father elephant are in this very open um, space close to her. And there's no gun, like there's no safety in any way. She's like invested in saving this animal and we become very attached and we realize very, very early um, that, you know, these animals are her family as well as her husband and son. And so um, the fact that she has this trust in the animals, exactly, yeah, yeah, as well because, as they have the trust in her. Because I remember when when Lutz and the group, because the group come over because of the commotion or due to the sounds of what's going on. I think Lutz even yeah. says, "Oh, why don't those men have guns?" And then you show yeah. that the, that you show the male elephants getting really rowdy and he's kind of pissed off, and the mum elephant's trying to like knock Jessica Chastain and be like, "Hey, help my daughter, figure something out." And yeah. um, and so yeah, you're right. Like yeah. she has complete utter trust and faith that you know, like um, that. The- the Both sides of, yeah, yeah. Like she's so empathetic to the animals, and they understand that, and and yeah. um, she treats them not like yeah. mindless kind of uh, beasts, which is really good. Yeah, and I mm. thought that that was an interesting um, kind of moment with the Lutz character when he comes out, and his first reaction is, uh, "Why don't those men have guns?" Yeah, that he's obviously a little bit more barbaric and um, brutal in the way that he cares for his animals. 
than the way the Zambinskis are with that like tender compassion and yeah, trust yeah. He's, in he's, on both sides. Yeah, you're right. He's not tender per se. Uh, he he does he is somewhat empathetic, but he's more of like they're they're beasts and animals. They should be treated as such. So I didn't actually t- start taking notes until midway through the film because there was a really <laughs> right. Um, there was a really powerful moment that I I saw and I loved, and so I was like, I need to make a note of this. Um, so after the the German occupation happens and they start migrating um, Jews in under the empty cells. So yeah. um, for those of you who haven't seen it, what happens with this zoo is that they've got all of the zoo enclosures up top, but below their house they have kind of tunnels that lead to, um, I guess, the safe places for the animals. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so like where, in like bad weather and stuff, they take the animals underground to keep them safe and protected. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that's where all of the Jews end up staying. Yeah. And there's this really cute moment um, of whenever... At night time, oh, if the Antonina piano? starts yeah, playing, right. yeah, if Antonina starts playing the piano at night time, it means the Jews have gone, um, the Germans have gone. But oh, she plays during the day. for them to come up. Yeah, yeah, but if she plays during the day, you need to run, you need to hide, yeah. you need to get out of there as soon as possible. Well, I love. Um, so I just want to mention, I love that scene because when they reincorporate that part, is it's in, it's like the the only time they have it played during the day. It's I think because the lights is coming to the house and she sees that, yep. so she runs across yep. the room and then just starts slapping the piano. It, it's not exactly elegant, yep. and it kind of like I find it a bit strange that she just starts like smacking it while looking around, and I'm like, ah, it doesn't really sound like you're prop- you're playing anything. Like I, I don't know if I was lights, I'd find it a bit weird. That someone's just really Are you serious? Yeah, like she's she, really she was playing an actual song. Oh, it didn't sound like that to me. It sounded like she was just smacking the keys. And I was oh, like, no, no, no. I was like, oh, okay. She was just play, <laughs> playing it so it was loud enough downstairs. Oh, okay, yeah, because I'm like, you're playing that really heavy for no reason. But I guess that yeah, makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Okay, sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, so the moment that I, I found that I really needed to make a note of was yeah. after there's a really Oh, there's so much story that I really need to like fill in mm. before getting to this moment. So one of the Jews that they end up saving is a young girl. She's about 13, oh, I think, 12 boy. or 13. Um, are you, you going to mention she... that? Oh, okay, no. Go ahead. No, I, I was going to say, are you going to mention that scene where the, she gets taken by a couple of Germans? And No, I was just oh. going to... Yeah, that's that's a rough one. <laughs> yeah. I hate cruelty to children. Yeah, that's pretty messed up. But yeah, so she's very clearly been taken advantage of because uh, it doesn't look like her family I is survived. alive at oh, all. No. So it's just it's just her, and she's this young girl, and she's quite pretty. She's very um, damaged and so, too, like mentally. Yeah, and yeah. so she just continuously, obviously, is taken advantage of by the German soldiers in the ghetto where mm. they're they're stashed. Um, and so she's one of the first people that they save because Jan is so overwhelmed with a need to protect her because she's just a child yeah. um, that he stashes her in essentially a scrap bin. Yeah. Right. I forgot they did um, that. <laughs> yeah. Right. So the, the way that they end up smuggling Jews out is because they come up with this plan of taking the scraps from the ghettos, the ghetto yeah. from the ghettos. Yeah. And turning them into food for the German soldiers yeah. because obviously they're oh. going to need to to yeah. so they've they've hidden this this we're going to get into the ghetto this is how we get in and we're going to make it seem like it's to better the German troops so under all of the food scraps they've actually stashed the Jews so when they take it back to the zoo um compound all of the um animals um, all of the Jews are under the trash which is really clever um but she's one of the first people that they save and she is there from for the whole the whole movie essentially and then she ends up becoming part of their family at the end of the movie as well um because she's just so damaged and Antonina like just there isn't any way that she can send this this girl off the way that she is no so no she, way she, she wouldn't essentially, survive like yeah so she essentially ado- like adopts without the paperwork this this girl i can't remember her name either but there's this really wonderful moment because she doesn't speak and she just kind of becomes friends with the rabbit oh yeah so the antonina, moment where she takes the rabbit down yeah I remember yeah that. so antonina kind of coerces her just telling her a, a story. story and speaking very very peacefully and calming and trying to be as neutral as possible and then 
um, kind of passes over this baby rabbit that she's been holding and it becomes a comfort to the girl. Um, but the moment where she first kind of starts to interact with other people is when she's in her cell and there's a few of the other boys who have been saved, but they've obviously got their parents with them or their mothers or fathers or at least someone. Um, and her cell is so dark. It's black and there's nothing. Yeah, she's just sitting on and straw then, or something, like a blanket on straw. Yeah, yeah, because she just like hasn't opened up in any way, and she doesn't come upstairs after uh, at night time when the the piano plays. She stays downstairs in her cell with the rabbit. She's just like super guarded, and her cell is so dark. And then the scene, the shot right beside her is the cell where all the boys are. Um, I think maybe there's a girl in that shot as well. But there's candles, and they've got a box, and they've turned it into like a card. Um, like a card table and just that very it's still really dark because of the situation that she's in but that ability to show candlelight and this sense of joy while still being in in a cell and the, the difference between what hers looks like and what theirs looks like was really was a lot and so it was this nice kind of this is where she is mentally and this is where they are mentally and Good God, you can hear the dogs going. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're going so off like mad. Hey, do, so do, do you want me to quickly deal with those? <laughs> yeah, loud. yeah, probably. Because that might become annoying for a listener. Yeah, all right, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Hello. So it turned out like, you know that scene in 101 Dalmatians how all the dogs start barking like throughout the city to like... Yes. Yeah, that's kind yes. of what just happened in my street. Every single every single person in the street owns a dog and they all went off at once. So that's what was that's going on. <laughs> I kind of thought all the main characters were good were good people um like especially i guess the the german zoologist like he started out like i kind of thought it was going to be this villain where like he's not inherently an, an evil person but like he just obviously he's working for the nazi so there's a level of where he can't really be a good guy but then they, by yeah. the end they kind of make him like a full creepy villain and i didn't really like that, that you know when like he gets a bit rapey i suppose yeah. i wished it was more of he loved antelina um, but it was Antonina. just Antonina. Sorry, he loved Antonina. Like Antonia, but Antonia. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I like like they should have gone where he clearly he loves Antonina, but he just he doesn't turn evil about it. He just he, he just stays kind of neutral. He's just doing his job, but it turned out he's just being a typical evil Nazi villain. And so for me, he wasn't like a sympathetic yeah. character. He was just oh, he's another evil super Nazi. Um, I don't know. I wish they could have handled him better as a character yeah that was a really difficult one for me because i um at the very beginning when he saves his he like offers to take the prized animals yeah, right. i'm like oh good you know like he's obviously still caring and and stuff like that and then he gets a little bit darker and you start to realize oh actually you're probably the one who bombed the zoo in the first place so you could have the prized ones and therefore you don't have the com the competition. Yeah, yeah, because when when he when he explains that, that that's his plan, he almost says it with like certainty, like that's kind of what he already expects to happen. And yeah. I and I think that they bring that up later when he's gone. They're like, yeah, he's clearly in control of us. Don't get any ideas. It's the other way around. Like he owns us now. Yeah, um, we, yeah. I actually really appreciated that exposition from Jan's character because yeah. I don't think I would have put that together. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't have been able. Because it didn't really process that he was super high up in, mm. um, in Hitler's army. Yeah, well, because it, so, it, it's mentioned at the beginning, yeah. and because someone calls him out of being a Nazi, where he's like, "Oh, so I think at the dinner party, someone's like, oh, you should know what Hitler's up to.'" And he's like, "Look, I'm just a zoologist. I don't know, like, I don't know the politics of how things work." But then, yeah, but he's like, actually does. Yeah, and that's really difficult. Yeah. That's so uh, frustrating. I actually wanted to mention the the war part of this because um, I was a bit confused about their timeline so because this movie literally took place over pretty much the entire span of the, of the war and um from what i thought I, the war was like 10 years long no it went from 39 to 45 um uh, okay and so from what i remember uh about world war ii was that yeah so yeah the the germans did attack 
hole in in September 1st, but they bombed it for about yeah. two weeks um, before they even sent troops in. Um, and this film plays it out like they bombed it and then hours later then the, the troops land. Mm. And so the one thing this film really did agitate me with was that their, level, their scale of time frame was completely shot. Like unless it strictly told yeah. you it was months later, I had no idea how long this film was like going over. Yeah. Um, and yeah. yeah, like they, they... But then also in saying that, I don't think that they were in the zoo for as long as we think because Jan gets captured while they're still at the zoo and then it gets raided and then they move off like it's two years later yeah you're right because because they he, come back and then Jan you know returns so mm. is it the whole span of it or is it from no. like 939 to like 41 and then uh, in 45 they come back no okay so so the invasion of Poland um lasted almost like so the attack on Poland lasted almost a month and then the, the Germans sent in troops they then they so they yeah. they occupied, occupied Poland for almost a year until the Russians um, abated as well. So pretty much for the entire uh-huh. war, Poland was stuck between the Russians and the Germans fighting each other. Um, mm. And and because, yeah, like I think on the 20-something of September 39, uh, that's when yeah. the Polish army surrendered to the Germans. But um, the film, yeah, it jumps like for the basically the whole second act it's supposed to take place yeah. over about three years but it, it's not exactly clear and because there's one part near the end where the um the polish uprising happens which was the final year of the war where um obviously yeah. the, the the polish army resurfaces and they get the civilian population to help uh, fight and during that point of time mm-hmm. the russians are basically pushing into poland and the, the germans are on the retreat um and so at that point yeah. the russians help the, the polish fight off and uh, yeah jan's character Similarly, he gets shot in the head. Like he, I thought he was one hundred percent dead. No, well, see, I, I thought he got shot in the head, but I didn't. He hit his head. Well, he got shot at, and then he hit his head well, on the way down. Because the next line is someone mentions, "Oh yeah, he got shot in the head." Um, in the next scene, when because because also she get uh, uh, Jessica Chastain gets pregnant in the course of this movie, and what's interesting, yeah, again timeline problem is that her and Jan like have sex at one point. And then I think it's like a couple of scenes later, she's like nine months pregnant. And then a couple of scenes later, she's given birth to a child. And then like five minutes later, the kid's like eight years old. Yeah. Or whatever it is. Um, oh, no, no. Two. So two. Sorry, two. Um, two. And yeah, like I just really hated the mess of this timeline. And that's what I mean. Like editing wise, this film was kind of a nightmare. Um, so whoever yeah, edited this film needs to, <laughs> needs to go back to film school because they didn't do a very good job. Yeah. Yeah. And I wonder... Um, uh, see, this is me trying to defend them because I always think <laughs> yeah, go for it. I'm try. I always try to like find the best possible reasoning for things, and some of that for me is like maybe the, the fact that Jan and Antonina, where they lived in the zoo, was so yeah. kind of separate from the center of town. Uh-huh, okay, yeah, that maybe it, was. it did feel like that passage of time. Oh, uh, okay. So like, cause was... they, cause they, they, they technically were involved. Like, cause where, cause where they were in the, in the city, like when the uprising happens, like they're no way near it. Um, so you're right. right. I think they're yeah, so, so, they're so maybe, separated from, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So maybe that's actually a stylistic, stylistic choice in that it is jumpy because for them, they could go for, you know, extended periods of time without even leaving the zoo and going to the city without going to the city and then um but yeah but that's just me trying to be super defensive of choices i don't like to think bad things but that's fine um when i thought there was a really nice moment when there's the just before they get invaded not invaded sorry um when lots comes to ransack thinking that the jews oh near the end near the end yeah yeah Yeah, um and there's this really beautiful um comparison shot between the family the Jan Antonina and their son yeah. having dinner but obviously like five o'clock dinner the sun's still out and then the shot where everybody downstairs oh is, yeah 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 is um like playing cards and it's almost like they're up top putting on this act and it's fairly very solemn and silent and no one is talking and then downstairs they're playing cards and they're having a great time yeah yeah they feel safe 
No, you're right. Um, that, that is a just, that is a juxtaposition. That it totally is. Yeah, 100%. that was a really nice shot for me. I like. I mm. loved that a lot. Actually, I was like, this is really good. Well, I, I think for that entire because for the five years, whatever they did this, they they pretty much are putting up a front the entire time because. The, the, the one thing we should mention about how they smuggled some of the Jews out is very clever, where they dyed, like for the women, they dyed their hair to make them look like their mm. Antonina's like relations. And then they kind of, yeah. they, they very, very openly just like smuggles them out. And then Antonina at yeah. one point, she's even like, oh, come back later, cousin, I'll see you next time. And no one questions it. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, that's really yeah. cool. But so then, it, it is. But at the same time, like, how the fuck is the guard being like, wait, but no one <laughs> yeah. has come in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's well. I guess they they actually do reincorporate that later with um. I I keep forgetting the guy's name. I'm just gonna call him the zookeeper. Um. Who Jan? Yeah. Yeah. There's a scene where I think there's a Jewish character who looks like Adrian Brody. Um. He's some kind of doctor. He's a bu- oh, yeah. he's a bug guy. And when when oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah he's yeah. one of their friends yeah when 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 um he's about to get smuggled out of the the ghettos one of the the officers the Nazis like hang on. Okay, I know who you are, but who's this guy? And then Jan's yeah. like, "Oh, he's my friend. He's a doctor." And then the guard's like, "Well, I didn't see him come with you. So what are you talking about?" And then Jan has to very, uh, like, la- like kind of desperately try to convince this Nazi guy to kind of like back off. Um, and they pretty much almost get caught. Like it's it's the only time yeah. where you feel like they're in danger of getting discovered. Um, and yeah. so I did like how well, it does feel a bit silly that they openly smuggled Jews out of the out of the zoo. But out of the ghettos, it's much harder to blatantly walk someone out. And I think yeah. I think going under what we said where they turned the zoo into a pig farm, the Nazis aren't, obviously aren't going to be thinking they're up to anything weird. But if you're trying to walk a Jew out of the ghettos, that's going to raise a lot more suspicion. So Yeah. And I think, I think the reason that scene happened too, if I'm mm. remembering correctly, is because they were about to destroy the ghettos yep. and it was yep. actually it was the only chance he was going to have to get his to friend get out, out. Yeah. because the friend the friend you meet at the very beginning he's at the dinner party yeah um with them and he's a jew but his wife isn't no or no no she, she's not technically a jew. she's married into the life but she wasn't a jew because she looks very similar to antonina um yeah. but then um he gets taken to the ghettos and she's safe and that's where we first learn about the jews being yeah are kind of um held and that's where they decide well this is our friend like we can save her and then they continue to like oh no no i no i think it was because she is a jew i think that there's a conversation where they where they talk about what's going on and then that her husband the the bug guy he's like oh can you yeah. hide my wife because at that point like it's much easier to hide one person because i remember yarn or Jan, whatever his name is one no he was already gone because she was in oh okay because i remember where the, the zookeeper he brings up to um uh, his wife that like, hey, it's really dangerous for us to hide this woman because she's a Jew. It's like it's kind of stupid, but then, like, so I thought there was a discussion where they chose to save to protect her over him. Um, no, so I think there was a discussion beforehand, and they were all thinking they were all talking about like how they were to save, you know, who they could save. Oh, um, okay, and then sure. to save the wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but then I think she, he actually got taken, which is what pushed everything. Yeah, yeah, into yeah, action. Yeah. Um, but what I really loved is when they got him out of the ghetto oh he's reunion with his wife. he he has he has no idea he has no oh yeah that's right that's why that he doesn't know anyone smuggling yeah, people yeah yeah so he's he's like super upset he's like you've put yourself in so much danger like i appreciate yeah. it but like what have you done and she's antonina is just sitting there ca- casually like he's talking to the husband yeah. and and she's just playing the piano yeah and then people start to come up and out of like behind the corners and, the look and from in his downstairs face. And they just fill. Oh my god, I'm getting tingles. The Jews just fill the room <laughs> yeah. because he's trying to convince them that they've put themselves in danger, and he's that he has no idea that all of these people are downstairs. Um, and it, yeah, just the sheer joy and relief in his face is ah, oh, is such a good moment. I love it. That guy, I don't know who he is, but he's a really good reaction actor. Like again, like I thought he looks like Adrian Brody, yeah. but yeah, that, that moment that he's like his utter bewilderment of like of like just yeah like you said he had no idea they were smuggling people and he's so overcome with yeah. joy and also confusion that he's just like he's crying he's happy he's just it's it's, it's a moment yeah. where you're like like it's a it's a, yeah. it's a small victory for our heroes in the story and it's it's very nice uh, I yeah did like it. but then then another really dark moment for me was when 
um, so Jan is continuously trying to save um, the this priest. Um, oh, and the priest never goes oh, yeah. because the, the priest has priest. all of these children. Yeah. The priest has all of these children under his care, and I think he knows. He knows for sure that they're not going to make it, but he has these children under his care, and he's going to do his best to make them feel safe while while he can. And while in Jan's last ditch effort to try and save yeah. the priest, they're getting they're exiting the ghetto to board the train to, that is essentially taking them to the concentration camp. I mean, we know that. Yeah. Um, and Jan ends up while trying to convince the priest, he ends up helping the smaller children get onto the yeah onto the onto, onto the, the cattle, train the cattle trains. Yeah, I mentioned that before. They yeah. have just they have they trust that the priest knows what he's doing, and this man is talking to the priest, and they can't. They can't reach the platform, so this little girl puts her bag down oh, yeah. and then just puts her it, just puts her arms up to be lifted yeah. onto this train, yeah. and you're like, oh, yeah. well, that's so rough. Because the part the part in that scene that was made me think like it's, it's really clever writing, I suppose. Well, like a moment. So for that priest character, where he's he's talking to obviously the kids are very confused, everyone's very upset, and he's telling a yeah. story to the children about how they're going. I think he mentions they're going to Rome. Like he's telling them a story about they're going on an adventure. He's obviously not going to tell them they're going yeah. to a death camp, and and so from, well, he, I don't think he fully knows that that's where they're going. No, no, no. But but he knows he's like definitely got an inkling. Yeah, yeah like yeah, he, yeah. I guess he knows like they're probably not going to survive, and obviously he's trying to make sure these kids don't freak out and cause a ruckus. But yeah. yeah, I guess from when he said that, you're right to when. Jan's helping up the, the kids and stuff. It's like, and also Jan, like his face when he's lifting up the little girl. He's like, he knows he's helping her go to a death, more or less. Yeah. And it's such a yeah. heart wrenching moment. It's a yeah, yeah. It's such a hard thing to stomach to be able to go. You've saved all of these people, and that's fantastic. But you couldn't save them all. Yeah, and, uh, and yeah, that's just that's kind of what Chin uh, was, deals with it as well. Like he has to be very analytical with the people he saves and obviously it gets to him yeah. at the point where he can't save everyone but he has to choose who he saves and yep. and that's i think yep. in that moment with the aunts helping the girls on the train or the kids it hit him there like he like you said he can't save everyone but he has to be selective who he he helps and maybe that like he hates that and i think that's what pushes yeah. him to join the polish uprising later on well for sure Do, we we already know from the get-go when he saved um the girl yeah. in the very beginning mm. that he he has a big heart and that being able to choose was never going to be no something that he could do yeah because he was impulsive he wanted to save her and he was going to and that moment of him kind of hitting that wall and being like i can't save everybody yeah. i can't just pick these people up and run because that's going to put all of this other stuff at jeopardy and that's really yeah, I just found that really... I was, like, weeping. Oh. I was watching him lift this little girl yeah. into the train, and I was like, no! <laughs> I really... I <laughs> I was so sassy when Lutz, the German zoologist... Yeah. Um, so, obviously, he's got this thing for Antonina, and he thinks that they're essentially having an affair. And well, they do yeah. share, a kiss, they yeah. share a kiss at one point, um, but that's simply because the Jews <laughs> downstairs yeah. make make a noise I think a kid cries it's the yeah and it's the only thing she can no the, the brothers downstairs start fighting oh god it made me so mad oh okay like, boys um and yeah and then the only thing that she can think of in the moment because no one else is there to to distract her it's just her and Lutz and he's leaving he, is she pulls him in for him. a kiss yeah and uh and so he, from that moment, then starts to like get a little bit extra handsy well, with her. He, like they never actually do anything. No, from because he becomes he becomes infatuated with her, and I think it's because like she reg yeah. she regrets that instantly because she knows, like he already likes her, and then she's like permanently yeah, fueled she, his interest in her. She feels sick. Yeah, she feels sick about it, um, and she's so upset by what she's done. But then at the very end, um, Lutz makes a. Uh, uh, Lutz makes a, a, a comment about liking each other and she said something about you disgust me and he says, well, you hit it well. And I was like, no. Not at any point did she give you, other than that kiss, an indication of being into it because she was super uncomfortable. Every time he touched her, she like got stiff and awkward. What, oh, and he's oh, like, you hit it well. And I was like, nah, dude, you were just blinded by your cock. Well, no, like, you just... What about, there is a moment though, like when they're tending to like some garden or something, they crouch next to an animal and they're, he's like, they're touching hands and I think her husband oversees he, it. Yeah, yeah. But she's actually, you see her visibly stiffen. Oh, okay, and just right. like, not 
want to be a part of it anymore. Well, I think but obviously yeah. because he has such control over them, she can't, you know, like she can't defend herself and be like, no, no, this isn't okay. Well, I guess like, cause I think Jan, the husband puts up at some point that like, you know, Sorry, well, it's, well, it's all good to put up a face to be nice to the Nazis. Like, it's too far to, like, pretend to, yeah. you know. And she's like, look, I'm not doing that. It's just kind of how he's, like, how the Nazis think it's going. Yeah. And it's a it's a good point that um, it's, like, how far should she be willing to go to protect what they're doing? Like, should she, you know, basically yes. pr- create an affair just to keep them off her back? Um, yeah. And she obviously contemplates it, but then she realizes it's not worth it. Um yeah, she feels sick about it, yeah. which I really appreciate. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. this, the idea of being like, even just the kiss, knowing that it was for the greater good, just like she can't, she can't, she can't handle it. It makes her feel unwell with herself. Um, can, can we actually, can we talk about the ending and how, how that freeze frame really bothered me? Well, I should mention that it bothered me. Uh, I don't yes, like, like I don't this... remember the freeze frame. Okay, so the, the film ends where after they come back, after her, so. After her and her son like leave the the zoo and actually flee Poland, yeah, they flee the like, city. They, they run. come. They don't just like leave. They're actually... Yeah, they they come. They come back after a couple of years, and um, it's uh, you know after the husband's found to be alive, and they're all like yay, and then so she she kneels down to tend to an animal or something, and then it freeze frames and it starts displaying text, and um, I really didn't like that. I mean, because the, the text was like a um, a surmise of. You know, this is a true story, 300, whatever, and then they lived on to do this. And I'm like, I just, I for one, maybe thought they could have just either created scenes to show. Yeah, yeah, know, yeah. Like maybe while, while that text moving. was up or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, they could have like maybe shown pictures of the real zoo and people, and stuff, you know, like kind of how yeah. they normally do. And, yeah. and I just didn't like it. It was just a freeze frame on her doing nothing while they had the text and it just yeah i don't know yeah it was a nothing ending to, to a pretty decent movie they they really had an underwoman ending yeah and i think they could have done something yeah no I, I agree i agree i put yeah i yeah almost like having actual footage from the zoo yeah would mm. would have been really cool because i really like when something is well, a true story and right at the very end you actually get to yeah. see like images or hear audio or see video of things that actually yeah, well, happened it, and helped inspire the yeah the like story. E- even a picture of what what like they looked like in real life like the couple yeah. and the son yeah. and you know stuff like that and and like the, the part that i i thought was a like i wish it wasn't revealed in text but basically um so you mentioned before how the the zoologist the Nazi he obviously takes the exotic animals back to Germany to their zoo yeah. to to help to re- pursue them um sorry to look after them and you find out in the end credits that obviously when when the Russians and Americans uh stormed Berlin the zoo was destroyed so obviously all those animals will end up killed yeah. um and and like I guess if you don't know how history played out, you're not expecting that conversation at the beginning where he's like, "Look, I'll take for animals," and you're like, "Oh yeah, he's a good guy." But as soon as he, when he said that in the movie, I was like, "Oh, those animals are dead. They're gonna die." Yeah. Um, and so like, do you think like this movie, in regards to like its setting during the war, like, do you think it's um maybe like it's better to go in not knowing? Like anything about like do you think knowing anything about the war is important to like um, watch this film or get no, enjoyment? I don't. It? I don't think knowing anything about the war is particularly important to understand the, or to 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 get the film. Actually, no. Maybe that's a lie because I think I think the intensity with which the Germans hated the Jews wasn't super portrayed in this film. So it's like if you didn't know anything about world war ii you would just be like they put people in in you know like a centralized area like why is that a big deal yeah but to fully understand the consequences of of that um is probably a little bit it's helpful to understand the story yeah, a because, bit more. because they don't exactly explain like what the ghettos are and why they were exactly. put there and then because and i think that's maybe because uh, that's why i asked because the way they don't explain anything is to me it's like um, it's 
it's for people who do, who just want to see this really, I guess, you know, um, heartwarming story about these people who risked their lives to save the Jews. Mm -hmm. And also, if you know stuff about the war, you get all these context clues without them having to, met, like, to explain anything. And that's part of the charm of, like, West writing where you don't inherently have to play in everything, like, explain everything very heavily yeah. handed to the audience. And so a lot of the context um, of the war was just given very... Um, Subtly, and yeah, you, you, like so. That's why, because I know a lot about it. So yeah. when they mention stuff, I, or they didn't mention stuff, like you, you're, you know where things are going. Like, like with the um, the kids on the train, like you don't. Yeah. It's never said where they're going, but you're 100 percent. Yeah, but it's suggestive. You, uh, it, 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 impli it takes the assumption that people have a certain amount of knowledge about World War Two, and I think, I think, if I had watched it with the amount of World War Two knowledge that you have, I think that there would have been a lot more moments. Um, a lot more like hidden gems i think in in the stuff that they told for instance with the zoo like i didn't know that the zoo perished um so yeah like from the get-go you could be like oh god he's making a terrible decision yeah exactly yeah, exactly. yeah. Well, yeah that's what i was like so <laughs> so i think i think having a super, an appreciation for world war Two and the the history of it mm. i think this movie would yeah. make i think this movie would be a lot more um meaningful whereas yeah well, well that, i i yeah, appreciate no, it right. i appreciated it more from like a filming perspective and jessica chastain's mm. performance rather than um yeah more so at least than i did as a historical account so i'm a big fan of um in movies and i guess tv shows as well where, like when there's a very clear uh i guess um degradation of a person's like character like the uh -huh. will uh -huh. like to live and in con contrast to where jessica chastain like opens on the film where she's riding her bike through the zoo and yes. you know she's opening the gates and then by the end we're like you know she thought she lost her husband all her animals were killed she was almost raped so she thought her son was killed yeah she was almost killed a couple of times mm -hmm. and like you can tell she very much like to me she very much felt like a different person. Yeah, she was a like, lot more somber. Just, like she lived, she lived yeah. a lot in the last, yeah, however long. And yeah, like she, yeah. she lived through like a lifetime in that five years, and you could really, you could see it on her. Like she's completely come out of that um, different. Um, and I wanted to quickly mention, I love the scene where the son gets caught out lying oh, to the. Yes. Uh, like he he tripped him up so good, idiot child, and the kid like what. When when the kid realizes he fucked up, he's like, "Oh man, I done goofed." Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah, that was a good scene. I don't know I like that. Um, but yeah, no, for me, like I, like I said, I really did enjoy it. And like, and like you mentioned, having a really good understanding of, of World War Two actually did. I get some, I guess, maybe a bit more contextual enjoyment yes. um, out of the film. Yeah. Um, well, I did think I did think it went on for quite a long time. Like it, there was a few instances when I was looking at my phone, and I'm like, oh man, I'm only like 45 minutes into this. Uh -huh. I think I, I think that is part and parcel due to like the lack of proper. Uh -huh. um, uh, management with the, like the time frame of this movie, but um, I, I would I would definitely recommend it because, like, like you said, like it, it's a the particular films of like true stories of people, you know, doing like these really outrageously he heroic things during like these times of war and stuff, you yeah. know, like uh, like the Schindler's List and, and things like that, um, and the Pianist or whatever. So yeah, um, if, if you're into these type of true story uh, movies, biopic or not biopic, but uh, basically these type of stuff, then yeah, no, de de I definitely would recommend it. I really loved this film. Um, I thought it was done. It's mm. filmed really beautifully. I I personally mm -hmm. didn't see the the bad editing that you did. Oh, there's heaps. <laughs> yeah, I saw the more like picturesque <laughs> shots of like the zoo oh, and sure, the riding sure. of the bicycle and. Yeah, like, like, like that. again, that opening of the film yeah. is amazing. Yeah, like, so it's beautiful. I really, I really loved those. Um, I think most people would enjoy this film if they, in any way, shape, or form, have seen a a war movie before. I think I would really a war drama. Yeah, I think mm. if I would watch it again, I think I'd really like to watch it with my grandparents. Um, oh, okay, sure. Um, right. Just because. Yeah, I guess the the older generation has a little bit more appreciation for the struggles of people, regardless of whether it was in World War Two with the Jews and the Germans. Yeah. Um, you know, there's just a level of struggle that my grandparents went through in life and just to exist that I I um Aww. I would really like to appreciate with them. Ooh, Adrian, episode five, done and dusted. Well, not quite. I mean, no, well, no. So what are you, 
what did you see this week outside of this film? Steph, you have to you have to see the thing. You have the, to, the what's at the I box just... office? Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, can you sing it? Can you sing it? Can you sing it? No, we we've discussed this. I I don't have a jingle. No, come on. I don't have a jingle. Uh, what? Yeah, I mean, oh, fine. All right. <laughs> I'm going to write you a jingle. Okay, yeah. I'm, you gonna, do no, that. I'm going to find someone who write you a jingle. I was going to say, okay, so. you'd have no concept of music. <laughs> hey, I, hey I, did, I did four years of music extension in high school and I played percussion. Did you really? Yeah. I didn't know yeah. that. I never performed on stage or anything because I refused to. You learn but, you something know, new I, every day. You're such a chicken. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, I'm such a chicken. Uh, so my what's at the box office is two pretty good things. Um, so uh-huh. my what I've been watching is... Uh, I guess Netflix's well their release of Titans, uh-huh. which is the live action Teen Titans show. Oh yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. Good golly, Miss Molly. That's the Little Richards uh, reference for you for a song. Uh, this is a really violent show. Uh, it's pretty graphic. It's yeah. You've seen some of it. Yeah, it's, I seen oh, I seen God. some of the first episode. It's intense. Like the, the I'd say. If 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 you've or if anyone you included have you if you've seen the Watchmen film mm. Zack Snyder's Watchmen, mm-hmm. um, it's it feels very much like it's set in that universe. It's very gritty. It's very like you know everyone, pretty much everyone is like a very broken character. They all have some massive yep. massive hangups, and they're all just like flawed people, uh-huh. um, which is great. And yeah, no, this is like people are snapping necks, bones popping out, people are like ripping eyes out, and it's it's brutal as and because um, it's weird because when you contrast like the CWs like. Flareverse shows like those are very yep. fluffy and but this is like this is brutal it's guttural it's really intense and uh-huh. I, while I think it's a weird blend between it's got the writing of like the CW superhero shows which is just not blatantly good yeah, yeah, um, but yep. visually but vis- visually this show is actually really engaging it's shot particularly well yeah, a lot of yeah, a lot of really unique um, so yeah no I totally re- would recommend it um, and what just be looking? aware it's uh, oh yeah, so my, my what I'm looking forward to is something I came across actually the other day. It's called IO. It's on Netflix oh, as yeah, well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you're probably aware of this. I've it's seen basically it. a movie. Of, oh, you've seen it. Yeah. You've seen the movie. I didn't finish it though. Oh, awesome. I'm like, I think I'm half, maybe 15 minutes from the very end of it. Okay. And I was like, Ugh, and I stopped. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. No, I I, 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 saw, I saw the trailer like the other day, and I'm like, and it's basically uh, the road. But in like in a sci-fi world where um, for some reason the human population has flood, uh, fled to the Jupiter moon of Io um, yeah. and is like two people left on the planet, which is Anthony Mackie and Margaret Qualley. Yeah, see, um, that's deceptive. That's actually not the case at all. Yeah, well, well that's the way the trailer portrays it. Yeah, um, yeah. And so I'm guessing there's, there's obviously um, some, some things hidden, but it looks like it's a very like a last man on earth type thing, like the leftovers yeah. kind of deal. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I'm I'm really keen for it. I think it looks great, and I'm I'm really big on like mystery sci-fi thriller things. So uh, I'm totally hoping this is good. You've seen it, so and the sound you made, I'm not too. Uh... No, I think you will love it. I think you will love it. Oh, okay, sure. Okay, cool. No, I'm on board. It just that. it was just super long, and I was like, oh, oh. okay. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, there was just like, it It hurt my brain and I just couldn't finish it because I was like, I don't know that the ending is going to resolve anything for me. Oh, no. <laughs> but I think, I think it will for you because Great. you'll understand it on a different level. Oh, okay, cool. All right. Well, tell me what, what you've been watching and what you're going to watch, Steph. Um, so this week been? I actually, I watched the Umbrella, Cat, the Umbrella Academy on Netflix. Oh, Car- Carly's. Carly's been marathoning that like all week. Yep, I just I just binged it and it's fantastic. I love it. I love Ellen yeah. Page and this cast is yeah. just fantastic. Um, mm. I I like oh uh, yeah no it's just it's really good and I really love the level of in depth um, character development which is really good and I love that it's based on it's it's based on a comic book series that was created by. I don't think it was the lead singer, but someone from the My Chemical Romance band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it is. It's the front man. The lead singer. Yeah, cool, Romance. cool, cool. Um, yeah. yeah, so it I is. thought that was really interesting. Um, and I, I didn't actually know, I didn't watch the trailer before I watched it because I saw a billboard for it on my way to the gym one day. And I was like, that looks like a fantastic poster. I'm going to watch this. And, <laughs> and that's, that's literally the decision I made to watch it. And it's so good. I love it. And I'm really upset that it's finished and that season two is not, probably not even being filmed yet, which is very, very difficult for me. 
Every, yeah, everyone's raving about that. Like, I, oh, so I, I've been sticking to Titan, so I haven't watched it yet, but everyone seems to love it. Oh, yeah, um, it's fantastic. And- it's so good. It's yeah. really big on Tumblr at the moment, so it's got. It's oh, got oh a, well, the, t- the Tumblr scene's big on it. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's. <laughs> what is it, this? Two thousand nine. It's got okay. such a big web culture now. So really, yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. It's everybody yeah, so loves class. Can, can I, can, oh, he's he's the dr- the the druggy. Yeah, who can see the dead the, people? Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Can can I? Because I don't know if you're an Ellen Page fan. Is she Love like? It. Because I, from what I've seen when Carly's watched it, she simultaneously looks like she's forty, but also twenty-two at the same time. Yep. And yep. Uh, which is very weird. But or like, so is she like the best out of the the bunch, like for acting wise in the show? Like, is she? Like, no, I think they're all know, on par. They're I, all really decent. All on par. Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, except maybe I do. I he's from Game of Thrones, and I do I do love his character. Oh, Dick on Tali. Uh, <laughs> yes, maybe. You, I don't you mean know. the guy who's like on Tali? I don't yeah, know his the name. Big, big muscle guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, I yeah. don't know his name. So either. he's mm. yeah, yeah. And I don't, I don't know whether that's his acting. I actually think that's his character. He's just a bit like docile. He's he's quite difficult. And so, okay, so of the of the cast, the main like the main cast, I love Ellen Page. Yeah. Um, I love Emmy, mm. who plays Allison number three, and I love Klaus, who plays number four number four he seems like the embodiment of like you know the my chemical romance yeah like, yeah, guy. yeah 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 like yeah that's that's just what i think yeah um and i think the guy who plays uh, the, the boy who plays number five uh is pretty pretty good as well which is weird yeah he's only like he's only like 15 and like yeah, he seems yeah, like yeah. he's like yeah but his character is meant to be like 58 yeah yeah like so he seems like a really, really mature cool. actor for someone yeah. that age yeah so. um mm. but the guy the, the two older the two eldest, like number one and number two, the guy from Game of Thrones and um, Diego, um, they're like I think probably the weakest okay. acting wise. But I don't know if that's actually acting. I think it's just their characters. And coming up, I am going to watch a movie called The Upside, which is a 2017. Oh, okay. What's that? It's a 2017 film with Brian Cranston and Kevin Hart, and it is oh. actually a remake oh. of the 2011. Um, French right. film called The Intouchables, which is the story. I think we would. I I know. I watched. I love. I love The Intouchables. Yeah, that's the the quadriplegic and the. Yeah, just the. Yeah, yeah. They, they I have, watched that in uni. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah same. That's and a good. That's it. a good. That's a good movie. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. keen. I'm keen to see the American version of it. Although I don't. I don't. Oh, right. I don't think I'm going to love it because I don't particularly enjoy Brian Cranston or Kevin Hart. Um, <gasps> hey, whoa, whoa, whoa! You don't like Walter White? What's going on here? What's going on? I've never seen Breaking Bad. What about Mac in the Middle? He's how? I know. What? You don't how like Mac in the Middle? No, no, I don't actually. That's such a few, what? That's such an infuriating what? show because the dad is such an oh. idiot. I know he's the best. I do, I do enjoy Mac in the Middle, but the dad drives me insane. Um, oh man! All so right. I'm not. I'm, I don't have high expectations for it, but I'm intrigued to see what they do with it because Americans I always watch it do now. something a bit I did, weird. Yeah. I didn't know it was a yeah a remake of, of the Untouchables. Yeah, so that's Ooh. called the Upside. Yeah, it's so. Kevin Hart. Yeah, is it? Oh, okay. That, that's probably the only point of contextual I have. Yeah, because Kevin it seems Hart's like a weird mix. Much. Mm. Brian Cranston mm. and Kevin Hart in a movie that's actually supposed to be um, yeah pretty heartwarming. If it's too if it's too much of a comedy, I think that's really going to be yeah. detrimental to yeah, I agree. the original film. I agree, which mm. is what I'm okay. concerned about. But yeah, so yes. that's what I'm going to be watching this week. Cool. Uh, but yeah, um, so we should probably give you guys a heads up. Um, Adrian and I are actually currently. Uh, I was about to. I was about to mention this. Yeah. So go ahead. Uh, so we're in the middle of two moves. So I am moving to <laughs> Canada um, in the next few weeks, and Adrian, after that, is moving down south. So the next couple of weeks may be a little bit different. Um, I, I'm, I'm, we're going to try and stick to the same schedule, but we are throwing around the idea of getting some, some guests on to, yep. to talk about films and movies. Uh, we don't know yet if it'll be both of us and a guest or if it will be um, maybe if I'm in the middle of a crazy, crazy period, if Adrian has just a guest on and, and they talk together or vice versa when Adrian does his move. Um, but right. so just bear with us while we transition. It's going to be a learning curve and an experience all round, I think. 
Yeah, well, I mean, like, yeah, your, your move is quite, it's quite the life-changing experience, I suppose, in mine, yeah, less so. I mean, crazy. you're crossing the globe. I am. To the next phase in and your you know life. What? The, which the we're all going to miss you. Th- oh, thanks. The thing that I was, <laughs> uh, like, most concerned about was the internet connection. Yeah. Because All right. <laughs> depending on, no, no, no. <laughs> so depending uh, on the internet connection depends on how, yeah. how quickly our audio, like our, um, our Skype calls happen. So if it's like a dodgy connection, these yeah. might, these might actually not <laughs> turn out very well. Like the actual recording of them might be really difficult. Well, it's going to, well, it's also going to be funny because with, because I'm going to be like a day ahead of you in time. Yes. Uh, yes, you are. Time zone. So it's like we're going to have to figure out how the hell we're going to work. <laughs> yeah. So it's essentially the, like your your mornings be awesome. will be my afternoons. That's yeah. That's how. But yeah, I think I talked about that with Carly. So yeah, I'd have to would have to record in the morning for me uh, once you finish work and stuff. Yeah. But um, yeah. So, uh, in regards to your guests, I actually talked to my friend Benjamin Donnelly today, who I've mentioned before in the pod uh, in the podcast. He's before. the one who worked um, on and- Aquaman. Aquaman and Godzilla and Very yeah, so cool. he's and he's open to to be a guest and to talk about his experiences working on these films. And I love that how that came about and yeah, so um, so that's that's our the queue and I've already spoken to some other people who um, who have their own companies and stuff. So yeah, uh, it's a bit of a format change, but Steph and I um always intended to to del- to delve more into actually the uh, industry itself and and yes. uh, have a bit a bit more of a variety of content for you guys. So uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoy when we do have these guests. Um, like Steph said, if it's going to be a trio or a duo, either way, it'll be a good time. Yeah. So so bear with us. Thanks for sticking it through for episode five. Yep. <laughs> Yay! <Whee! laughs> All righty. Well, we will um, chat with you guys next time. Bye. Are we designed?